Hi, I'm Don Trasnell, and this is my exhibit, Walk in Peace, is a visual uh, journey through the idea of peace. The star of the show is really the shoes. They're all original, hand-painted shoes from all walks of life to help to tell a story of peace, which is very varied. Peace just didn't start in the 60s. It started way back in early man and his quest for peace. So let's see how the stories work. Here we hear Mr. Churchill after the uh, Second World War given the V sign, and the V sign then becomes for victory, but then it's adapted by the folks, the young folks in the 60s, as Peace Brother. Now, the swastika that you see above it is a piece of supportive art that kind of shocks people, but the, here's the idea of it it's from the 11th century church in Ethiopia, and it's a peace sign. The Romans also used a swastika as a peace sign. You'll see it at Hadrian's Wall. American Indians used it for decoration, and the people of India used it as a religious symbol. Swastika means Sanskrit good. We know what happened to that. It was hijacked by the Nazis and turned into a symbol of terror and hate. We see this everywhere. You see it today on kids' shoes as a fashion statement. The interesting thing about it is a lot of the kids don't know where this symbol came from. And here's how it evolved. In the 1950s, a designer was asked to design a logo. He based it on the semaphore flags, which were a signal device that people used in those days. The letter N, N, the letter D, D, nuclear disarmament. So now you can amaze your friends by knowing what this really stands for. Mm. A lot of stories come from traditional legends, but more important in this case, the Bible. Here we have the dove being introduced to Noah as he receives him saying that good times, more peaceful times are coming, the flood's going to go away, and here's the dove coming to Noah holding an olive branch. Shoes again are very important. Here we have Mr. Picasso who made the dove popular in the 50s by introducing it in art forms. American Indians thought, wow, Health, but more important, peace. This is their peace symbol, the sun, bringing good health and peace to them. These are big shoes to fill, guys, and here's the story behind them. If you look at the American seal, the eagle looks towards the olive branch, not towards the arrows. He's looking toward the olive branch as a peace symbol. We ask people to come to the show and to interact. Wow, they really interacted here. Shalom is a word that you will see used around the world as a greeting, hello, goodbye, but more important as peace. If you look closely in the word shalom, you'll see a peace symbol almost in the characters of the word. I've had people from uh, Jewish uh, backgrounds say, wow, yeah, this really captures the feeling of peace. Join this army, this is the Peace Corps, Mr. Kennedy's idea of going around the world helping people. And 1920s, they came up with the Pax Cultura, which is the peace through culture, which protects antiquities against war. The Mayan symbol of peace, a night symbol from the uh, Yucatan. You know what these people are looking for? They're looking for the Prince of Peace. Do you stand for peace? Well, here is the Prince of Peace. And here's his story as he enters Jerusalem. He knows at the time that the white donkey is a sign of peace. And at his feet they lay down another peace symbol, which are the palm leaves. And the third peace symbol is Jesus himself, the Prince of Peace. Now we're going to walk towards the uh, Olympics, which we talked about earlier how symbols are reintroduced through time. Here we have the dove from Noah's story being released before the Olympic modern games and the eternal flame, which was also an ancient symbol of peace. And if you won an event in this old uh, Olympics, you would receive a laurel leaf as a, seedment, uh, as a sign of achievement. And here, just to introduce the shoes again, are actual track shoes portraying uh, runners from Africa cave drawings. Now, if you join this movement of peace, you have to wear wet socks. 
because you're going to see, you're going to be on a small rubber raft in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and you're getting in the way of these big factory ships from killing these wonderful whales and, and dolphins, and these are the P Greenpeace movement, which is an environmental movement. A brand new peace symbol, which has this been introduced. Anytime they break down a missile site in the world now, and this one was the original one in Russia, they plant sunflowers as a peace symbol instead of missiles. Now, if for all you people that love music, here's a story about the best songs from the 60s, which were voted on. Imagine was the top one by John Lennon, but look who's second, Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Now, if you look here, this has just been built in Iceland, a large monument to John Lennon, where Imagine Peace covers the monument in different languages, and it can be seen from outer space because the light from this monument goes 40 miles into the sky. People in the 60s would be demonstrating against the Vietnam War and young people would put flowers in the barrels of the rifles of the National Guardsmen. I had a nun come in the other day and said she did that in Washington and was very proud of her actions. Here we have an unusual peace symbol. Only in the United States will we have a peace symbol based upon the sheriff's gun that's going to shoot a bad guy called the peacemaker. And then we go to the moon. We did more on the moon than just make footsteps and play golf. We left a plaque. We came in peace for all mankind, and that still exists on the moon today. Now, if you were living back in the 60s, you would gravitate to an area in San Francisco called the Haight-Ashbury area, where they love psychedelic art, psychedelic music, psychedelic drugs, and most important, free love, love and peace coming together. If actually, they actually hijacked the Ankh from the Egyptians and wore it around their necks, defining love and peace. We have the American Indians uh, using what they call the calumet to sit down and make peace amongst each other. This is the oldest peace treaty in the world. It goes back to Ramesses II and the Hittite army fighting. After the war was over, they decided it was foolish to kill each other. Let's have a peace treaty. This is the oldest peace treaty in the room. Then we have some ideas that didn't work out too well. This is Mr. Chamberlain returning to England saying that Hitler and he had agreed that they should never go to war again. The next day, Hitler took over to Sudetenland, and nine months later, he invaded Poland. So sometimes peace ideas don't work. And here's the triumph of peace over war. This is symbolic of hopefully the action that will always follow war, that peace will prevail. This pair of shoes asks the major question in the room, are you a hawk or are you a dove? And if you live in India, you believe in peace of mind. You wake up in the morning using the sound om. Um. This is symbolic of the om um sound, which is a peace sign to Indians. Now we go over to an old story that you saw down here with the flood, but this is a Nordic tale of the rainbow where they believe that their bows at rest look like the rainbows in the sky, a message from their gods saying they were at peace. And this story is about a young girl in Hiroshima who's dying from the effects of the atomic bomb. And as she's dying, she's given a paper origami crane, which becomes a symbol then for peace to the Japanese because they use the crane instead of the dove as their peace symbol. This becomes a world movement now where if you fold 1,000 cranes, you get your wish granted. Then we have a story from the Bible where we know the lion laid down with the lamb, but actually the Bible says the wolf laid down with a lamb, but over time we can see how people change stories. So peace has got lots of ideas. Here's one that is a three-dimensional idea. This is from the Japanese after the Second World War, and it's a peace pole. And a peace pole, to be official, must have the prayer on it, may peace prevail on Earth. There's over two million around the world. There's one even at the North Pole. I take the uh, idea of decorating it, much like an American totem pole, with the prayer on it. So you've gone around the room. You've seen different ideas of peace through time. Lots of them taking ideas from each other, but man always looking for this very fragile idea of peace. Thanks for coming, guys.